Hello and welcome to a Learn Embedded Systems microcontroller review. Today we're going to be looking at the Challenger RP2040 Wi-Fi from Invector Labs, which is a company based in Sweden. This is a very interesting RP2040 powered board in the feather form factor and it features Wi-Fi connectivity. If you're interested in keeping up to date with new microcontroller boards that are released, then make sure you are subscribed for our latest reviews. So let's get started with the price of this board. There are a couple of places to buy this board. If you are like me in the UK, then this board is available for £14 from the Pi Hut. If you are elsewhere in the world, then you can get this board from Invector Labs Tindy store for $14.95 US dollars and shipping to the US costs three and a half dollars. The board is shipped from Sweden, I believe, if you buy it from Tindy, so it might take a little while to get there. There is an option that adds a UFL connector and removes the onboard Wi-Fi chip antenna, and this option costs an extra dollar on the Tindy store, but actually doesn't cost any, any more or any extra if you buy it from the Pi Hut. I will leave all the purchase links down in the description. I think overall this is a pretty reasonable cost for a board with this set of features, but let's get into the details a bit more. I have already mentioned that this board makes use of the feather form factor, but specifically that is dimensions of 50.8mm by 22 by 8 and a thickness of 3.2mm. The USB connector does protrude probably about a millimeter over the front of the PCB, making this a little longer. Essentially, this can serve as a drop-in replacement for other feather boards, such as the Adafruit Feather, SparkFun Thing Plus, uh, and other similar boards. Now let's take a look at what features you get in this form factor. Firstly, this board is powered by the RP2040 microcontroller. This chip is the first chip designed by Raspberry Pi in-house, and it is a dual-core ARM Cortex processor, which is based on TSMC's 40mm process node. The processor itself is clocked at 133MHz out of the box, although it can be quite easily overclocked for some extra power. We have a video about that coming out shortly. Make sure you are subscribed for that one. It has 264KB of SRAM, two SPI, I2C and UART controllers, uh, two of each, and it also has four analog to digital converter inputs. Uh, essentially these four inputs are muxed into one single analog to digital converter. A mux is essentially a switch which just selects between each input. It has eight PIO state machines, USB 1.1 host and device support, as well as 16 PWM channels. Supporting this RP2040 chip is eight megabytes of flash memory, which should be enough for most programs that you will write for this board. The RP2040 itself supports up to a maximum of 16 megabytes of flash, but I think that 8 megabytes is enough, especially at the price port point of about 14 pounds, 14, 15 dollars. Now, we can't miss the 2.4 gigahertz B, G and N Wi-Fi connectivity of this board. This connectivity is provided by an ESP8285 coprocessor, which is a single core 10 silica L106 32-bit RISC processor, which is clocked at 160 megahertz and includes one megabyte of internal flash storage. This chip runs an AT command interpreter, which allows the RP2040 to utilize the Wi-Fi functionality by sending simple commands over a UART connection. The AT command interpreter will handle these commands, execute them, and send AT messages back to the RP2040 when data is received. As previously mentioned, there are two options of antenna on this board. The version that I have has an onboard chip antenna, but this board is also available with a UFL connector instead, depending on your needs. I've had no problems with the connectivity uh, and signal strength uh, of the board of the onboard chip antenna during normal usage. Elsewhere on the board, we have a USB-C connector, which is nice to see. There is a LiPo charging circuit which can charge a LiPo battery at up to 250 milliamps through the standard 2mm JST battery connector. You can also power the board by connecting a battery to this connector as well as wiring it up if 
more permanently to the bat pin if that's something that you wanted to do. Hot swapping between the USB and battery power appears to be seamless, so there could kind of be a UPS built straight in if that's something you are interested in doing. Uh, just to note that this battery, uh, battery charging and powering circuit can only support single cell LiPos. There is a charging indicator LED which will illuminate red when the battery is charging and turn off once the battery has charged. On the subject of LEDs, there is a user programmable green LED which is connected to GPIO pin 15 and there is also an RGB NeoPixel. There are two buttons, a boot button and a reset button. And that about sums up the features of this board. As you can see this board is single sided so there's nothing really on the rear apart from a a pretty cool shuttle sketch. I would think that this board would suit having castellated pins um, if you wanted to uh, solder it more permanently to a, a, another PCB, but pretty much all the other feather sized boards don't have castellated pins either, so I guess this is just keeping in line with all of those. In terms of pinouts, this board shares the same pinout as other feather boards, so it should be a drop in replacement for your projects. Feel free to pause this here if you want to take a, a closer look at the pinout diagram. The RP2040 uses GPIO pins 4 and 5 in order to communicate via UART to the ESP8285. Uh, and the ESP8285's reset pin is connected to the RP2040's GPIO pin 19 and its mode pin is wired to GPIO 13. Programming this board is quite straightforward. You can use C and C++ using the RP2040 toolchain that we have a tutorial on and um, the video linked in the cards above will show you how to set that up. You can also use MicroPython and CircuitPython if that's more your thing. Also, there is Arduino IDE support for this board through Earl Philhauer's Arduino core. This is quite easy to set up. Simply add the GitHub link to your Arduino additional boards URL in your Arduino IDE preferences then install it in the boards manager and then you can select the challenger RP2040 Wi-Fi uh, from your boards list. There are plenty of choices in terms of programming so this should, should suit most people. I think we've covered pretty much everything in regards to the challenger RP2040 Wi-Fi and now it's time for some conclusions. I think this is a fantastic board for only a couple of dollars more than the Adafruit Feather RP2040. This board adds Wi-Fi functionality and keeps basically everything else the same. If we compare this board to another RP2040 board that we reviewed recently, the Stacky Pi, which costs the exact same amount, but is essentially just a Raspberry Pi Pico with a 40 pin header, we can see that this board is in fact great value. And this has really made me want to check out other boards from iLabs or Invector Labs. Let us know if you want us to cover any of these. So thank you very much for watching. Please let us know what you think about this board down in the comments. If this video was interesting, then please leave a like and consider subscribing. Thank you very much, and as always, have a nice day.